Hello and welcome to my first audio soloing guide. Today we will start with the basics. This guide will cover talents, glyphs, pet talents, pet abilities, pet families, consumables and a few macros and tips. First, we will start with the talents. For rank 1, you will usually want to use post haste, especially if you need to create ads or move quickly from one side of the room to the other. You'll never need narrow escape, however Crouching Tiger Hidden Chimera can be very useful because of the deterrence cooldown reduction. Deterrence is particularly useful when a boss casts hard-hitting abilities at you, or when you need to tank a boss while raising your pet. Silencing Shot is to be taken whenever the boss has an interruptible cast, especially if it's dangerous. Wyvern Sting is only useful when two ads need to be quite controlled, and Intimidation is also very situational. Spirit Bond is your talent of choice for soloing by far. It keeps you alive and heals your pet too. Exhilaration only offers a quarter of that healing and I've never used it in soloing. Even the pet heal isn't worth it. Aspect of the Iron Hawk is totally useless for soloing. For rank 4, take your usual DPS talent depending on your specialization and gameplay. Same goes for rank 5, although blink strikes can be useful in fights where you get stunned and you need your pet to do a lot of damage quickly. For the last rank, keep in mind that Glaive Toss is the best for single target DPS and that Barrage is great for killing little adds. So, as you can see, most ranks have two useful soloing talents, so take whichever one works best for the current boss. For the specializations, this mastery allows you to use exotic pets, especially heroism, and brings the most DPS. Marksmanship is at the same level for self-healing thanks to its chimera shot offering as much self-healing as the BM's spirit mend. However, you can use both a turtle and chimera shot, so it might be better if both you and your pet are taking extreme damage. Survival is the worst for self-healing, but the best for AoE, especially if you take the feel of the hand talent with it. Now, let's take a look at the glyphs. Revive Pet and Aspect of the Cheetah are the most useful minor glyphs, and the Glyph of Stampede allows you to use the Quintopola Stun without putting each and every pet in tank spec. Glyph of Mending is mandatory, and Glyph of Misdirection too. It allows you to misdirect full time on your pet. This is the macro for misdirection. The focus line is just there to help me track my pet's debuff, and is not necessary. You will want to macro misdirection in most of your shots. That way, you should be able to DPS fully without worrying about aggro. Here you can see me doing my DPS rotation and if you look at the top right corner, you will see that uh, I have a misdirection uh, up most of the time. The third and best glyph is Animal Bond, both for Hunter and Pet Survival. You will nearly never need to replace it with another glyph, especially since most other glyphs are useless. Pets can have three specializations. Ferocity is only useful if you are tight on DPS but your pet takes low damage. Cunning is usually useless for soloing. And Tenacity is the usual soloing spec. Your pet takes less damage, more healing, has more health and a big tanking cooldown. Some hunter abilities have a defensive use in soloing. For example, readiness can be used to reset deterrence or feign death if you need to chain two of those more quickly. Also, Stampede can be used for a quintuple last stand. Make sure it summons five tenacity pets, for example by using the Glyph of Stampede, and then use last stand. Your pet will have insane health and healing for 20 seconds and will usually be nearly immortal. It's actually the only aspect of Stampede that was enough to the ground. Now, let's talk about pet abilities. The stay command is pretty useful, no matter how much your pet moves around, you can send him back to his stay spot by putting him on passive. However, the easiest way to move him around is to make a follow and passive macro. 
I personally use a master scroll macro because it makes him run faster. For the stances, assist is useful when you want your pet to rush the boss as soon as he is raised or as soon as you pull. And defensive if you want your pet to focus on an ad without running back to you after it dies. You also have cower. It's better to do keyboard this ability because the autocast usually comes too late since it triggers under 40% health. Pets also have growl. You can keep it on, however, it will prevent you from kiting bosses and taunting them. Finally, there's a move to command, but it tends to bug if your pet isn't on passive and is rather unreliable in combat. Also, pet families have special abilities. Turtles and beetles have a big defensive cooldown and are the most resilient pets. It has a 20% uptime and triggers at 50% health. The other main soloing pet is the spirit beast. It has a powerful heal. Make sure you make a macro for it. Just look at the first three lines on the screen. Just don't put it on autocast if you don't want the pet using it on himself. There also is a core hound that brings heroism and the usual raid buff pets. Before a pull, you will want to rotate pets, buff yourselves, and then blow all cooldowns. Pre-pots can be used if you're low on DPS. However, for some boss you will have to bring uh, multiple turtles or beetles and therefore will not be able to use these buffs. The last useful pet is a gorilla who has an interrupt. Now we are going to finish with consumables. First, the crystal of insanity. It's pretty useful to save money. However, it goes away on death and has a 15 minute cooldown and is also a little bit less powerful than a flask. It's found on a rare mob right here. Then there are the drums of Forgotten Kings. They are pretty cheap and pretty useful. They are made by leather workers using Acid Dragon Scales and Heavy Borean Leather. The Borean Heavy Borean Leather can also be created with Borean Levers at a ratio of 6 for 1. Here I'm approaching the spawn point of the rare mob, and here it is. There are also stamina scrolls. One costs one Inferno ink per scroll, another one Snowfall ink for five scrolls, and the best one, ten inks of dreams for five scrolls. Finally, the Mammoth repairs your equipment, sells you tomes, and clears your bags. Oh, and don't forget about health potions, they can come in handy and are cheap. So that's it. If you have any questions, please share them in the comment, and feedback is always appreciated as long as it's constructive. Next stop, the next Ramas guide. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this guide useful.